Um, now, Hazel, I found a, the reason I got into Hazel was because, was it last year that you did the presentation on the Fuju scanner, the SNAP scan? Uh, I think it was longer than that. Okay. But last summer. Like maybe last. And it was just amazing to me to see what she did and how she was doing it. And I went out and bought a scanner. But then I, I discovered that scanning gets only first part of that. What do you do? How do you organize it? How do you file it? And everybody has their own method. She had one, and it was very good. And I tried using it, and it really didn't work for me because I'm sort of not a, a keyword and somebody else stuff. So I discovered Hazel. And um, because I'm sort of... Uh, um, I, I want to give special thanks to David Sparks. Now, if you've seen the Mac uh, Power Users podcast, which is really excellent, it's one of the best ones, uh, David puts it on, and uh, he gave me permission, and he gave Mac Group permission to post it, to use some of his videos and some of his information, which is copyrighted, in return for a quick plug for his book, which is in the Apple Store called Paperless. And um, this is a wonderful book. It won an award from Apple for the best use of iBooks. It has videos and all sorts of, uses all the features of iBook. And uh, it's about how to go to live a paperless workflow. So I did correspond with David and he granted us permission and it can be reposted on the website, the video. So. Um, anyways, what is Hazel? Well, Hazel started off as a series of cartoons in the Saturday Evening Post. And as you can see, Hazel was a maid, and you know, there she is cleaning. And then after that, it became a TV series in the 60s, featuring... Uh, Hazel did everything. She cooked, she opened the hard door, she gave advice, she cleaned. In other words, she was all purpose, you know, all purpose made. So, uh, yeah, it was a series that ran for almost two years, two years or something like that. And that's where they got the name for Hazel, uh, the program. And, uh, so, and it's Hazel from Clean. You have to excuse me, I'm going to be drinking a lot of water because of all the drugs. Um, Hazel was put out by a company called NoodleSoft, and I'm giving a slightly abbreviated presentation. So before we get to the main act of the night, uh, you stop know, it. Okay, stop, stop it. it. Okay. Um, so this is a slightly abbreviated one, but now uh, the main resource for Hazel is called NoodleSoft. They're the company that puts it out. They're very, very responsive. And um, Hazel does a lot of different things. It, as it says, it's your personal housekeeper. It's a, it's a preference uh, pane. It operates in the background. You're not aware of it. It's not a separate application. It actually installs as a preference pane. It can create rules to automatically keep your files organized. Um, See, I wouldn't remember this in my drug state, so. Um, it can open archive set color labels and add spotlight comments and have it rename files and sort, which is one of the things we're going to show you. It has a very neat feature called App Sweep, which I'm going to demonstrate. And it has full iLife support. It can uh, take photos and automatically add them to iPhoto or music and add it to iTunes or import things. It's integrated with Spotlight. It has full access to any attribute that Spotlight can use. And those are more than just names. In other words, you could take, um, Hazel could find all the photos that were taken with an aperture of f4.5. You know, or, or because that's one of the attributes that's sort of hidden that's, that's available in Spotlight. You never have to take out the trash again. Hazel will do that for you. It can check things. Uh, 
It can shred files. It can automatically empty the trash of anything that's been there for, you know, you could say like if it's over two weeks old, automatically delete it. Um, Hazo can integrate with automated workflows, Apple scripts, and scripts in any language that you want to write or whatever you throw in it. So you can really extend it. It's very extendable and it tends to work in the background. Or you can let it be a little chatty and have it tell you when it's actually doing these things. NoodleSoft has great support. They have these uh, Twitter feed. They have a support area on their website. Uh, they have forums and then they have all these articles. Notice the pointer moving without me touching the screen. Is that amazing? Um, anyways, and you can, they have a whole pages and pages of these various articles they've collected which you can use as resources and learn how to do just about anything that you can imagine. So, let's see. Oh, okay, time for the app sweep demo. Okay. Now, I learned that if you've got Keynote running in the background, your cursor disappears and you can't see it. So I temporarily have to hide. I temporarily have to get out of this to do this. Uh, I've got a couple files up here. I've got uh, a PDF file and a photo. And I'm just going to clean up the desktop a little. And I'm just going to drag those to the trash to make a little more room here. No, I'm not actually not going to do that. I'm going to copy them to the trash. Okay. Um, Adobe Reader. Let's install Adobe Reader. So let's launch the installer. And agree to everything, install it. Yes, for all users. Continue. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, if I can remember, this is one of those special IDs I set up just for this. So let's see. I don't know why it's taking two minutes now. It only took a minute before. It must be the, uh, the other one. It's called the presentation effect. Oh, okay. Okay. So right now it's busy running the package scripts, it's collecting information on my computer and all my photos and address books and sending them to Adobe. I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. Somebody out there believed you. Yeah, I'm, that's why that's why the disclaimer here. It's sending them to Russia. Actually the NSA. Yeah, the, the NSA. So it should be done in just a fraction here. Anybody know any good jokes? Yeah, yeah, I, I had a friend who uh, moved, actually my old girlfriend moved into a new house up north and she was renovating it and she called me up and said, my windows are stuck, what can I do? And I said, well spray it with WD-40. And she called me back and said, I did, now the computer won't launch at all. <laughs> Leo, you don't have to leave. I wasn't that bad. Okay. Anyway, while we're doing this, I'm going to just notice on the trash here. I really want to drag these out of the trash. Well, actually, let me do something here. Okay. Let me duplicate these. And let me stick them back in the trash. Let me throw this away. Now this worked perfectly at home and finished right away. Of course. Yeah, it, it did. Unless it's QuickTime interfering with this, the recording, I don't think it should. No, I'm, oh, well oh, that's me, yeah. I don't know, it worked, it worked well when we weren't recording. 
Um, I think we'll go on and come, we'll let this run. This is really weird. Stop playing with the toy. Stop playing with the toy? Oh, it's done. It's done. Okay, if we go to my application folder, we will see that um, the very top here, come on. Where is it? Uh, why is this in backwards? It's just sort. Get added. Okay, where did it go? Well, I'm going to use Spotlight to find it. Yeah, this is, this is, I'm looking for Adobe Reader that I just installed. Um, there it is, there it is, Adobe Reader DC. And let's launch that. And of course, you know, it asks me, and I'm going to open a file, a PDF file. Uh, it can't be opened because I threw it in the trash, okay. Anyways, that's Adobe Reader. Now, Suppose I then decide, I just want to use Preview to read PDF files, and I don't want Adobe Reader anymore. I'm going to, uh, maybe I've installed the full Acrobat, and I don't want the, the Reader anymore. So I'm going to throw this out. Let's drag it to the trash. And because it was, I need to, uh, see? Okay. And uh, eventually, if this works, Hazel's going to notice that I threw it out. And it's going to come back and it's going to ask me, like it did at home, it's going to say, hey, you threw this out. Do you want to uninstall the other files? Okay, come on, where is it? Yep, it's there. Wake up, Hazel. This is one of these things where it never works on the demo. Well, it's actually, it's actually uh, pretty neat. Let me go back to applications here. We're going to trash. You don't have to open it already. No, I'm going to try to figure out why. I'm going to put this here. It's a freaking spell. <laughs> okay, let's try this again. Yeah, good drugs, good drugs. Okay, Be move nice. the application. All right. Be nice down there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let me try this again. I'm going to empty the trash first. You know, that shouldn't really matter. Throw away the Adobe Reader. We'll just okay. Oh, there it is. Hazel found the following files. We told it. So these are the other files besides what was in your application folder that actually got installed. And it asks, do you want to throw them away or do you want to keep them? And I'm going to keep, um, oh, maybe this folder called Adobe. But let's take the others and just throw it away. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it, it, it's an uninstaller. Um, I'll get, I'll hold the question for just a second and I'll get, I'll get there. Um, now interestingly enough, if I were to take this program, so now they're in the, and if I want to reinstall it by moving it back to, uh, applications, um, 
That's what happened last time. It, it may not do this because Adobe is sort of a weird file, but usually it even finds and it says, hey, you uninstalled this program and now you're reinstalling it. Do you want to take those files? Uh, here it is. Adobe Application Reader has been reinstalled. Would you like Hazel to reinstall all those support files from the trash? And I could say yes, and um, and now it has completely reinstalled the program it just uninstalled. And I think that's a pretty neat thing because people actually pay money to buy all these programs that uninstall, uninstall things. So that's actually a, a neat little feature that I, I discovered. It's, it's very useful because some programs create a ton of support files in all sorts of different locations. So let me go back to Keynote. Uh, say that again. That's only one of its features. Uh, it's, it's a little bit, oh, how was I describing it before I took all the drugs? Um, you, you called it a personal housekeeper. Personal housekeeper, right. It does a lot of things. If you remember the first uh, web page that I showed you, there was this list of all these things that it did. And primarily it does file management. And uninstalling can be thought of as file management, but it also has all these other features. This demo that I'm going to give you, that I'm giving, is a little bit like Terry White coming up here in, in a half hour demonstrating uh, Adobe uh, Photoshop. You just can't do it in a half hour. It just has so many different features. So that's why I'm putting up the resources where you can find them yourselves. Anyway, um, the talk about the workflow a little bit, um, and that's scanning. Now, workflow is a term that I ran across in the Mac uh, power users. I've never saw it before. But what it means is you do this, you do that. It's how you do things. And my original interest in, in Hazel was for scanning. It was, what do I do? How do I process the, the, the images I've, I've created through the scanner. So what I've done on my computer, excuse me, ah, this vodka's good. No, 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 I, I'm fine, I'm fine. You just want to drink it when I told you it's vodka. Uh, what I did on my computer, at my main computer, I don't use my laptop for this at home, is I created a file called Incoming Scans. And I set uh, the software that comes with the Fujitsu Snap Scanner to scan all of the documents into that folder. No matter what they are, it just drops them in this folder. And when I drop them in the folder, and I'll show you this in a second, um, Hazel notices it. So my workflow is this. I take a document, like a bank statement or a doctor bill or a medical report from when I go to the doctor, I place it in the scanner. I press the scan button on the scanner. And step three, there is no step three. It's done. So here's a little uh, demonstration um, on how that all works from uh, David Sparks. And I tried to do this myself to create one of these little videos, and it turns out he spent 90 hours on the video, so rather than do that, I'll let, I'll let him do it. Wait, I guess the wrong video. Wait. I click the video. Go back to here. Okay. Play. Here we are. Hazel is, without a doubt, one of the most amazing utilities on the Mac, and now I'm going to show you why. On my desktop, there's a file called H2O Bill. It's a water bill. It's a PDF file I created as a sample. And we're going to use Hazel to take that file, rename it, and file it away in a subfolder. So let's open up Hazel. Up. And you can see, Hazel, there's two panes. On the left side, you've got a list of folders, and on the right side, a list of rules. 
The folders are the places that Hazel lives to perform its rules. Uh, you can see I don't usually do much with the desktop for Hazel. I'm going to use the desktop for the purpose of the screencast. Actually, the real action for me happens in the action folder for Hazel. Uh, but going back to the desktop, let's create a rule. And you do that by hitting the plus sign. And we're going to make this a name-based rule. We're going to look at what the name of the file is to do certain things. So first, let's give the rule a name, H2O bill. And what we're going to do is tell Hazel, look at the name of the file, and if the name contains the word H2O bill, then it's going to do something, and that's do the following. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to rename it. And we're going to name it more appropriately following the naming conventions I talked about in the book. So let's remove the existing name and let's add a new one. So we're going to first put the date in and we'll do that with date created. And you can see by hitting this disclosure triangle, you can edit the date pattern. And this is exactly how I like it. Year, month, date. Click done. And actually, you know what? We're going to change that because this is a monthly bill, the water bill. So we're going to take out the date. So it's just going to be year, month. And then we're going to add the dash, space, dash, space. And then I'm going to type water bill. And leave the extension in. And that's the new name. So it's going to be the date created with the year and the month, dash, water bill. <coughs> Click done. Next thing I'm going to do is change the color. So we'll go down here to set color label because it's a water bill. Let's make it blue. And the next thing we'll do is we'll move it. And you can see here I put a lot of files away. Um, this is going to be a different one. We'll go to the desktop. That's already there. Okay, so you can see desktop, records, water. And that's good. Now you can see in here, I've got in the water file a 2012 folder. I'm going to delete that because I'm going to do something really neat now. Um, we'll go ahead and add additional rule. We're going to say sort into subfolder. And what this does, it will look for uh, if the file is on a certain year, it will file the, the document, the PDF document, into that particular folder. And that's going to be by date sorted. So we're going to say date created. And I'm doing a poor job of explaining this as I do it. But the point is, it's going to have the water bill, and it's going to look for yearly folder. So I'm going to take it down just to the year. And so this is a 2012 document. It's going to look in that folder. And if there's not a 2012 folder in there, it will create one and put this in it. When I get to January of 2013, it'll do the same and create a 2013 folder. So that makes a nice way to automatically organize your invoices by year. And that's enough for the rules. So we've got, it looks at the name H2O bill, it renames it, sets a color label, moves it, and sorts it into a subfolder. That's a great Hazel rule. So I'm going to click OK. The file is checked. So at this point, Hazel is going to start looking at the desktop. It happens pretty quickly. I could hum the Jeopardy tune or something, but I'd probably get sued, so I'm not going to do that. And we'll just sit here uncomfortably as I look at the desktop, and any moment, the file will disappear. Ah, and it just happened. Okay, so now I will go into the records folder, and I'll look at water, and there's a 2012 folder, so it created that. And there's a blue label full, uh, file called 2012-04 water bill. Isn't that great? So uh, that, that's awesome, but it, it does even more. I'm going to bring that file back out, and I'm going to turn the rule off. And now what I'd like to do is, is mess it up a little more. So you know how you scan documents and they get that real gobbledygook name, and you know it doesn't make any sense. So you don't want to, uh, so let's make a rule that automatically files it without me even having to rename the file. And the trick to that is to change what it looks at. Instead of the name, we're going to look at the file contents. Because I mentioned earlier, this file has OCR in it, so the computer does know what's inside it. So rather than look at the name contained H2O bill, I'm going to say the contents contain, and let's see what they should contain. Irvine Water Company monthly invoice. So I'll do that. All right. I'll say Irvine Water Company. And I'll make one more contents. And the reason I'm doing two is that makes it less likely to capture a letter from the Irvine Water Company. All 
Let me make sure I capitalize that. I did. Okay, so now the rule is going to look for a file that has the contents Irvine Water Company and monthly invoice, regardless of what the file name is. Then it's going to give it this magic name pattern. Uh, we're going to change the label to purple now, just so you can see, see that the rule work. And move it to the water folder so everything's great. I will put it, activate the rule, and then once again I'll sit here uncomfortably while the computer starts looking for a file with those specific contents. When it does, it'll rename it, uh, change the color, and file it. So any minute now, Hazel. Any minute. You might notice that time machine is running so out there. So that song. Ah, oh, just happened. Okay. Open records. Open water. Open 2012. What? Are you kidding me? There's a purple file. And it's got the Irvine Water Company bill in it, and it says water bill. Isn't that amazing? So you can just scan documents in if they got OCR. Hazel will figure it out, name them, and put them away for you. There is no work whatsoever. And it's a computer, so it will do it absolutely consistently. This is better than you doing it yourself, faster and easier. And this is really the reason why I can support a nested folder file structure. So excited about this right now is evidence of the fact that I am indeed a nerd. <laughs> Okay, um, now one of the challenges is that usually when you scan, uh, by default we set the scanner, renames a file, and it, it creates a file with the name of when the document was scanned. Or another thing that I will tend to do is I'll go to my credit card company, I'll go to American Express, and I'll download my statements to my computer, you know, they come in PDF form. But very often I'll download a statement which is not the current month. So the name of the statement, I don't want to use the date I downloaded the statement for filing purposes. What I really want to do is use the dates that are inside the statement. So there's a way around that too. Hazel's ability to automatically rename and file documents is really helpful. One problem people face, though, is they want to include the date of a file in the name of the file. And it, you know, that always was difficult until recently with this new update to Hazel. Now, this came out with version 3.1. What I mean is I've got this PDF file right here. And inside of it, I've got a date, you know, December 15, 2013. And as I record the screencast, it's actually January 2014. How am I going to be able to have Hazel grab that date out of the file and put it into the file name? Well, now that's possible with this date matching. So let me show you how I'm going to do it. I'm going to make a new rule. I'm on the desktop already, so I'm going to make this one for the desktop. And we're going to call it the lawn care rule. And the first thing I'm going to do is match the actual file. And if you look at this file, you can see there's a text in here, lawn care products. I'm just going to copy that, command C. And I'm going to say contents contain lawn care products. And doing that with Command C and Command V is nice because sometimes the way it looks on the screen isn't the exact case. They use like capital I versus an L or something like that. And you want to be able to make sure that you're giving the program the right data to use. So we know that we're going to be looking for a file called that includes the word lawn care products. Next I'm going to do is match the date. So I'm going to go back to contents. But this time, instead of saying contain, I'm going to say contain match. And this is where the magic starts. Um, you look, you've got all these different criteria you can use to match. But this new one is the date. And this is really helpful. I'm going to put this right there. Oops. And you can see I've set up a date. I'm going to call this the date match. And you can drag the elements if you want there. If you look at the file itself, the order is month, day, and then year, and the year is four digits. So we're going to do it just the same way. First, we're going to drag up the month, and add the slashes between them. Oops. Then the day. And then the year. Now, if you hit the disclosure triangle, you can see you can make changes. Like, if you wanted to say the, the full word December, you could do that. Or this one has leading zeros, or this one doesn't. So you can set these with a lot of particularity. 
in this case, we've got the full year right now is four digits, so we're going to want to make sure that we change this one from two digits to four digits. So now we've got the date match set up, and we've set our criteria. So we're going to look for a file that contains the word lawn care products and has that date match in it. Now the date match is then going to be saved as a variable that we can use later. So now I've done this, what am I going to do with the file? The first thing I'm going to do is rename it. And I'm going to go ahead and remove the name section. And instead, I'm going to put in that date match. See, there it is. I'll put it right there. And you can see that in this triangle, an edit date pattern, Hazel actually sets it up the way that most people prefer, year, month, and date separated by dashes, which is exactly how I've been recommending it in the book. If I wanted to, however, I could move these around or copy them or, or make changes to the way it presents the format and the name of the file, but I like it just how it is. Next, I'm going to add a name. So I'm going to put the cursor in between these two events. I'll put a dash, and I'll say lawn care invoice, and I'm done. So I've got a, a new name that starts with the date match and lawn care invoice. Next thing I'm going to do is uh, add a tag to it. Since we can do tags now with Mavericks, I'll add a uh, field guide tag. And then finally, I'm going to move it over to this lawn care folder. So I've got to actually uh, go to the desk, go to the search dialog, click on lawn care, and I'm good. So the rule now is in effect. It will find the date, it will add it to the name, it'll add a tag, and it'll move to a folder. If everything worked out right, if I didn't mess anything up, it should happen any minute now that I've activated the rule. So Hazel's looking at my computer, occasionally it's looking at the desktop for something that matches that criteria. You can see it's 11.59 now on the clock, so let's see how long it takes. Yeah, and there it goes. So you can see the file name changed briefly, and then it went into this folder. I'll go ahead and open it up, and you can see it's got the name including the date from the contents of the file, plus the lawn care invoice. It's all set up for me. It's got a tag on it, if I hit Command I. It's got the field guide tag on it, so I'm all set. If you routinely find yourself scanning in documents with a date on them that you want to include in the name, this is going to change your name. Um, it does. I mean, it, it, it's really, I've set up a whole bunch of rules, which I'm not going to show you all of them because of the, we, you know, we want to have our commercial and go on to the big act. Stop it. Okay. But um, there's a lot of interesting things that you can also do with Hazel. And one of them uh, is, for example, have you ever downloaded something and then you don't remember if you download it, so you download it again? and then you end up with two copies or something. Um, I've got Hazel looking in my download folder, or, in my, or my, in all my folders, and if I download something that I've already have, you know, I just download it or something, it may even have a different name. It may be a photo, a photo, but it may be a different name on the photo. And Hazel will come and it will look at it and say, that's a duplicate. I'm going to throw away the extra copy. Now this is all configurable. I mean, it's not going to do this automatically. But it is really neat that it will actually look at the contents of the photo as opposed to the name and say, this is a duplicate. So let's get rid, you know, let's move it to the trash. Um, that's just a very brief. Can you tell Hazel to do that for your entire computer? Yes. I mean, you'd have, you'd have to tell her which photos, okay. oh, my mouth isn't working, the drugs, uh, folders to use, but um, it, it can find duplicates, it can, uh, now it's interestingly enough, it, it's designed not to impact your usage of the computer. So I have not been able to figure out when it looks for duplicates. When you drop something into a folder, like um, a scan, it's almost instantaneous. It's within a minute that it fires off and then uh, files it. But if I drop a duplicate into my downloads folder, for example, it may be instantaneous, it may be five minutes, it may even be hours, but eventually it wakes up and, and uh, it, it sort of does all this in the background. And depending for things like photo, folder, uh, photos, where it, it has to do a more analysis, 
it, 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 it takes its time and it doesn't want to impact your usage of it. Uh, yes? One of the problems for the novice with system cleaning type programs is it'll find a bunch of things that are duplicates, but you never know if you should throw them away or not. Is there any protection or are you just left? Well, let me show you on here, uh, Hazel. Oh, by the way, those two videos that we showed, um, and this, it's slightly fuzzy, I noticed, on the screen here, but the screen capture was very sharp. So if you go and look at the recording here, everything, all those letters would be very sharp. So for trash, for example, here's an option to delete files sitting in the trash for more than, and you can specify the number of the time. Uh, you can specify keep your trash under a certain size so that files stay in the trash, but when the trash gets too big, it then starts deleting them. Oversized files should be left as is or deleted immediately. Uh, you can delete files normally or shred them by with a secure delete. Enable an app sweep. App sweep is what we, I demonstrated earlier. That's sort of the uninstaller. And you can set it up to work for files that you haven't installed. In other words, someone else installed the app. app. Um, show updates, okay, folders. This is where you specify the folders. And at the bottom here, it says throw away duplicate files. And that's, that's the test there. I have a question uh, relating to Paul's, Paul's question. Sure. When you have, when it notices that you have duplicates, does it give you a listing so that you can see the duplicates to make sure that there are no changes? Because maybe you added an extra comment in that one file, and but otherwise it's still a duplicate. I haven't seen a way to do that yet. However, it does not. It it puts it in the trash and it tells you that it's put it in the trash. It puts out a little notification on the Apple Notification Center over here. You'll see that this is it's called Hazel Helper. It told me that the files have moved, moved into subfolders, you know, so the file is in the trash, it's not gone, and then you can take a look at it. I'm just going to show you real briefly on the rules here that um, there's all sorts of things that you can specify, it, uh, including passes AppleScript, passes JavaScript, you can write code in JavaScript, shell scripts. Uh, these are the attributes you can select. For example, do you have an alpha channel? Um, you know, what is the type of instrument, the instrument name? These are all the various attributes it can match on. As far as actions, there are all sorts. There are move, copies, rename, sort, sync. You can use this to sync to computers. Add tags, remove tags, archive, unarchive, reveal and finder, import, Run an Apple script, run a JavaScript, run an automator workflow, or run a shell script, in which case it passes the parameters to that script. Run the rules on the photo contents, display notifications, or just ignore it. So it's very, very powerful, and it's very, there is a learning curve because it can do so much. Um, however, if you go to the website, there are tremendous you know, examples of how to do all of this. The developer is very responsible. It's a single person. He answers all the questions. The forum is very active, and people will say, how do I do this? And somebody comes right back and says, well, here's the type of rule you need. So this was just a brief overview. It's a very, very uh, impressive system, and I'm still learning about all the things I can do with it. Yes? It, it will know because it's not matching for duplicate. It's not matching on the. Uh, are you talking about throwing out the duplicates? Yes. No. It, it'll look at the photo itself and, and it'll do a, you know, a hash of the contents and all that, and it'll determine that it's not the same photo, even if it has the same name. Is it? Is it searching the metadata in the photo? I'm not sure what it's searching, but it 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 does work. So. Okay. So say you have a home business and you get you can deduct the water bill, the heat bill, all that stuff. 
say he's been on the road and can you, uh, since there's what's the art, can you go and, and find the total models to add up for each category and bring back to in theory, you should be able to do that. You'd have to write either, you'd probably have to write an Apple script and automator to process that. But it can go in and it can find the total field, you know, where you've listed those numbers and everything else and put them in variables, which you could then pass to an automator or a, a script um, to do that. It, it itself doesn't have the ability that, at least I haven't found it yet, but I haven't looked to do um, arithmetic. But I'm an officer in several nonprofit corporations, and I just take the various bills and statements and bank stuff and all this, and I just put them in the scanner, and it files them in the correct folders for the various business. If it's a medical bill, it files it for my mother. If it's my mother, if it's mine, it files it for me. Uh, so it, it's actually it's actually pretty useful. And like I said, I'm still learning about all these things that we'll do. Jamie, you've had your hand up for a while. You showed that list of so yeah. It's those attributes come from Spotlight, and um, there's a lot of them. But you can. It's almost any of the metadata which you can assign to a photo internally. Uh, it, it can. It can base. It can extract that and look at that. Okay. Uh, one last. Okay. Two last questions, and then we're going to move on. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, this this will be clearer. Let me find it here. This will be clearer when we see the uh, on the playback. Unfortunately, where is it? Um, okay. So it can create rules. Okay, it can open archives, set color labels, spotlight, co add comments, have it read in your files, sort them into subfolders based on name, date, or whatever attributes you want. And you can create your own workflows. It can do that app suite, which we just demonstrated. It has support for iLife and integrated in the spotlight for getting that file metadata. Uh, Leo, you're the last. Oh, I'm sorry, man. You what? What does it cost? Oh, twenty-nine dollars. Occasionally, you'll see it bundled in one of these, you know, application things where you pay thirty dollars and you get twelve applications and all that. Yeah, but um, it's well worth it's well worth it. Time is money. Time is money, and the amount of time I was spending trying to categorize and file all the things I was scanning was, you know, and I'm worth over twenty-nine dollars an hour. Leo, go ahead and then we're yeah, done. As far as the OCR, uh, I started using OCR back many, many years ago, and at that time, it was, OCR was not very good. Uh, is the OCR credible nowadays? Okay, Hazel does not do the OCR. The OCR is, is done, for example, on most PDF documents. Uh, the scanner, I have the scanner software set to automatically do OCR. If I have a PDF document, and one of the things that came with the scanner software was a copy, a full copy of Adobe Acrobat. You know, it was a, it, it's one level back, but it's still, I can take a PDF if it does not contain the OCR text, and I can feed it into Adobe Acrobat and say, create, you know, do the OCR and create it, the text, which is in another layer. Um, it does, all of the, bills and statements and everything else I've ever downloaded from a bank or a medical or the doctor always seem to contain the OCR layer too. But if not, I just run it through in Acrobat and uh, create the OCR. I have, I have one more question. Uh, I noticed that I was working on well, you had to do the ad copy and the setup so that it read the contents of your desktop. Do you automatically when you scan things, do you automatically stick them on your desktop? So in the event that Hazel does not function properly, you still see it on your desktop and therefore you need to address it. Well, this was an example when he used a desktop. I have everything scanned into a folder called Hazel, I'm called Incoming Scans. If Hazel can process it, it will process it and tell me. It also keeps a log file, by the way, of everything it's done. 
and tell me where it's moved or something like that. If it can't figure out what to do with it, it leaves it there. So it doesn't destroy anything. If, if it's a case that I haven't set up or a document it's never seen before and it's clueless, I just process it manually. So it's now time for the next uh, commercial and after... <laughs> she's going to hit me. Anyways, um, check out the re screen recording because as I said, that is considerably better as far as the um, sharper and everything else. And this is just a brief introduction. So thank you, and now we bring on the Beatles. Thank you. Okay. Such presentation of that. that sounds